Have you ever wondered how do you actually compose with microtones? I mean, how do you actually hear them? How do you actually conceive of them? How do you actually put them in a cogent way in your own workflow as a composer? Well, in today's video, we're gonna find out just how to do that. So right now I'm working on a piece for the Imani Winds. I got some of my pencil and paper right here behind me, my little composing setup. And to do this, I like to you know, play around a little bit on the computer. I like to be away from the notation software, which is on my screen on my left hand side over here. So I like to be in this station right here where I have my second screen, my keyboard, and my pencil and paper right here. But I write with a lot of microtones. I write uh, thinking about pitch in a different way than just the 12 notes on the piano. So what am I gonna use to actually model these microtones? Well, that's where this amazing software, Piano Tech, uh, comes into play. I'm not being sponsored or anything by them. I don't have a link or anything. I just really love this program. I use it all the time when I compose. So I wanna show you some of the features and how I actually implement it in my composing workflow. Head over to modart.com slash piano tech, that's tech with a Q, and you'll notice in the products page that we have this application front and center, Piano Tech 8. I actually still am working on Piano Tech 6, but it's all pretty much uh, very similar across the different versions. And you'll notice that this application is not a sample instrument. They didn't actually sample every key of a real acoustic piano to get this instrument. They actually modeled it electronically. So the nice thing about this application is instead of it being gigabytes and gigabytes of storage on your computer that you would need for all these acoustic samples, it's actually just a few megabytes. So it's really, really fast on your computer. It doesn't take up a lot of RAM. And it actually sounds very similar to what a real piano sounds like and you can tinker with it a lot more, including the tuning of it. So let's head down to the bottom here where we actually see the different versions. So there's Piano Tech Stage, Piano Tech Standard, and Piano Tech Pro. And I'll put the pricings here on the bottom so you can see the differences between them. The main thing is that we want to pick Piano Tech Standard because that's the one that lets you do the advanced tuning. If you don't do that one, then you're basically just you know, purchasing a model of a piano. You're not able to do all these different things like tweak it, adjust the tuning, adjust the microphones, adjust the reverb, etc. Of course, in this video, we're just dealing with the advanced tuning aspect of it. Now, I actually think the price is quite reasonable for what you can do in this application, but if you're a student or a teacher, you can actually get an additional discount of 40%. So this is the link right here for it. I just Googled academic discount Piano Tech, and it got me this link right here. So go ahead and use that when you purchase the app. All right, let's open up the application itself and see what's under the hood here. We're gonna focus on the left-hand side, which says tuning. We're not gonna worry about anything else in this video. Now, right here it says temperament, which is basically what kind of microtonality do you want? In this case, it's set up to equal temperament, which is just dividing the octave into 12 equally spaced intervals, like so. So that's just basically, you know, a chromatic scale. And if we go over to the arrow here, we can actually see a bunch more different kinds of tunings. And then we can go to what I actually use when I'm composing is this detune function. So let's go ahead and click that. Now this opens up the entire keyboard here. So again, if we play that chromatic scale, you can actually see the different pitches light up. Okay, but you might say, well, what happens if I actually want to hear, you know, something slightly different? Let's say that I want the E natural right in the middle of the keyboard to be about, you know, one quarter tone down, let's say. So what I would do is actually take that pitch there, which is highlighted, just so you can see it. It doesn't need to be highlighted. See, you can just drag the slider all the way down and you can see this number go down and up. So we can see it go up to 40 cents, 30 cents, 20 cents, zero cents, and minus 50 cents would be a quarter tone. Minus 100 cents, which we can't do here, would be a semitone. So if this is an E, that's now minus 50 cents or minus one quarter tone. And if I put it back to the zero level, it's an E natural. If I put it at the plus 50 level, it's an E quarter sharp, and you can really hear the difference there. But if you want something a little bit more nuanced, you can even do something that is an E eighth tone sharp, which would be 
plus 25 cents. Go back to E natural. And if I want something like E minus an eighth tone, I'll go to minus 25 here. And I can really hear it on this modeler. It's really amazing. And then go down even further. And we're back to E quarter flat. And I can basically do this with any, any note that I want. Now, I can reset it if I don't like that. And let's say I don't really know what uh, you know, tuning schema I want to use. I can actually just draw it out. So if I do a simple draw here, I can actually just draw out a, a tuning system. And I did a, a podcast with my friend Nina Shaker, who actually did something just like this for a piece to an amazing effect. And I'll, I'll put that link in the description below of that, uh, that, that uh, interview that we did. Uh, but it's just really fun because then you can get things that are really crazy. <laughs> That's an amazing way that you can just draw out like a painter what kind of tuning that you want to have in your piece. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and actually show you how to use this in real life. So I made it all the way to my primary screen here where I have my Logic Pro session populated with flutes, oboes, a clarinet track, two bassoon tracks, and two horn tracks. And you'll notice that each one of these tracks uh, are differentiated by their microtonal tuning. So if I open up the first track over here, this is flute 12 TET, in other words, a normal 12 note standard equal temperament. So what I'm gonna do here is I actually see that Piano Tech is loaded already on this track. So I go ahead and click this, and I actually can open up Piano Tech right into Logic. So this is extremely powerful. And as you can see, the temperament here is equal tuning. So if I go ahead and play just that solo track of whatever is here. Wow, very, very interesting, right? <laughs> but I had another note where I wanted an A to be down 25 cents or an eighth of a tone. And that happens later on in the piece. That's this stuff right here. So if I take a look at what's under the hood here, I actually can see that there's a bunch of A's, A4 to be exact, that I want to be down an eighth tone. So if I head over to Piano Tech, I actually can see in the D tuning area that that A4 is actually down minus 25 cents. So of course, uh, this gets its own track because I don't want other A's in the piece to be down 25 cents. I just want that A in that particular part of the piece to be down 25 cents. So take a listen to this. So this would be a, let's see, what pitch is this? This is G sharp four. So you'll be able to tell that there's a big difference between that note and the A4 that's minus 25 cents. So listen to this. Okay, that was the G sharp four, and then here's the A four. So it's already, you can tell, there's, you can really hear the differences well, and it's modeled here into Logic, which I think is a lot easier to, to work with than going through a notation uh, software. So I went ahead and I did all of this for all the different tracks, and every time I know that there's gonna be an individual pitch, that's needed, for example, if I have pitches that are G sharp plus 50 cents, I know they go on this track right here. So let me give you a little sneak peek of what the introduction of this piece sounds like. So this would be impossible to hear, in my opinion, if you're just working in a notation software program or if you're just doing it by ear, because I want to hear how these different microtones are interacting with each other throughout a time-based temperament. 
not just in the moment hearing the chord itself, but I want to hear how are these microtones shifting over time. Now I'm going to open up my Sibelius file over here so you can hear the difference between me modeling these notes onto a piano with really distinct microtonal intervals versus hearing what the, you know, sampled instruments sound like. To me, I really prefer the piano because number one, it removes the timbre of the instruments out of the way so I can just focus on the pitches. And number two, you'll notice that the microtone playback, especially in Sibelius, is not very good at all. In fact, I don't even have microtones uh, in the playback at all. I just have the normal 12 TET pitches. So let's hear what that sounds like. So of course it's impossible to, for me to figure out what the harmonies are like because I'm not hearing them at all. The pacing, yes, I'm hearing it, but I might as well hear it modeled uh, properly in Logic with Piano Tech. So what do you guys think of this integration between Piano Tech and a DAW like Logic Pro? At least for me, this frees up my mind completely to play around with basically any microtone that I want. I'm not limited to any one scheme. I can just go freely where my mind wants and I can improvise quite easily on my second monitor over here on the keyboard with Piano Tech open. So thank you guys again for watching this video. Please leave a comment down below if there's something that you would like uh, to know more about or if you have a comment for me at least. And I will see you in the next video.